Natural wonders can reveal a ton of secrets about history, such as the case with ice cores. They contain samples of what life was like for humanity many years ago. And when scientists analyzed ice cores from Mount Kilimanjaro to figure out why the ice fields were shrinking, they found something completely unaccepted. The fragments inside the huge frozen blocks ended up supporting a well-known biblical story, proving that science and religion can go hand in hand. You're not going to believe the biblical secret they unearthed. But before we start our story, smash the like button, make sure to subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you won't miss any new stories. For many years, scientists have been drilling into glaciers and ice sheets by hand and with special machinery to extract the cores. The ice gives them a better understanding of history and humanity. With these methods, they're able to grab ice from over two miles beneath the surface. The elements of that ice may have been on Earth for as long as 800,000 years. How cool is that? Over time, many ice fields and glaciers have formed. With each layer that's added, a record of the climate during that time is created. Ice cores give lots of information about the conditions of the planet, and they can help us have a better understanding of events that happened in history that we don't know much about. Sometimes they even match up with stories from the Bible, proving that some biblical things may have actually happened. The ice cores from Mount Kilimanjaro did just that. The findings from the giant frozen blocks ended up supporting a story straight from the Old Testament that we bet you're familiar with. The connection is quite remarkable. It's nothing short of extraordinary. It dates back many thousands of years ago to a period of time way before humans started exploring the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania's Kilimanjaro National Park which is a popular hiking and climbing destination. Each year, almost 30,000 people visit Mount Kilimanjaro and over 15,000 people come to hike one of the highest mountains in the world. But due to its shrinking glaciers and ice fields, it's been the subject of many scientific studies. Mount Kilimanjaro has three peaks, which were formed from volcanoes that are currently inactive. There's Kaibo, which is the highest at 16,893, and the only dormant volcano that could erupt again. There's also Mowenzi at 16,893 feet and Shira, the lowest, at 13,140 feet. Shira started being active around two and a half million years ago, and it has a large plateau that's surrounded by the remnants of its caldera, which is the edge of a volcanic mountain. Over the years, the caldera has been reduced due to erosion, both Kibo and Mawenzi's activity is much more recent. They started erupting about one million years ago. Kibo and Mawenzi have a plateau between them, which is known as the Saddle, with an altitude of about 14,400 feet. Kibo's rugged peaks also have very interesting features. They include secondary summits, ridges, and pinnacles that were created through eroding and natural elements like wind and rain. Kibo. The highest of Kilimanjaro's three peaks is now dormant, but it could erupt in the future. Kibo last erupted between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago. Within Kibo's caldera, there's Roish Crater, which was named after mountaineer Gustav Roish following his 25th climb of the mountain. While Mount Kilimanjaro has been familiar to East African people for thousands of years, it wasn't until 1848 that Europeans got a closer look at it. German missionaries Johann Krapf and Johannes Rebmann were the first Europeans known to attempt to reach the mountain and report its existence. After the German missionaries reached Kilimanjaro, many people tried to climb Kibo's peak, but they weren't successful. It wasn't until over 40 years later in 1889 that anyone reached Kibo's summit. Hans Meyer and Ludwig Percheller were the lucky men who can say they were the first to reach the south side of the mountain's crater. This happened to be Meyer's third attempt, and this one was perfectly planned. They established campsites with food supplies, so multiple attempts at the top could be made. Even still, it was almost 25 more years until any European reached the summit of Mowenzi. This climb was even more technically difficult, and it was eventually made by Germans Fritz Klute and Eduard Oehler in 1912. Since then, adventure lovers from all over the world have ventured to Kilimanjaro to try and climb the highest mountain in Africa, making it one of the most popular tourist destinations. Mount Kilimanjaro stands at over 19,000 feet, and it's the highest mountain in Africa and the highest single freestanding mountain above sea level in the world. 
At night, the temperatures on Kilimanjaro's slopes and summit can get as low as minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But despite these frigid temperatures, the ice fields on top of the mountain have been shrinking. While this phenomenon is nothing new as it's been happening for most of the 20th century, it's occurring at a more rapid pace. Some scientists even believe that the ice will disappear completely in the near future. So they've taken extreme measures to try and get to the bottom of why the ice fields are shrinking. Back in 2000, a team led by Ohio State University geologist Lonnie Thompson headed to the slopes of Kilimanjaro to get some answers. Thompson and his colleagues ended up camping out on Mount Kilimanjaro for more than a month to retrieve ice cores from the mountain. But getting the samples proved to be a much more difficult task than they could have ever anticipated. Collecting them quickly turned into a complete logistical nightmare. Before they could even gather the ice samples, the scientists had to first go through many difficult obstacles. They had to get 25 official permits from Tanzanian agencies before they could even start the drilling. After the team was given the go-ahead, they then needed to get their equipment up the mountain to the drilling site, which was above 19,300 feet. The task wasn't simple and they needed to hire porters to help. In total, there ended up being 92 porters to get the heavy lifting done. After the permits were gotten and the holes were finally drilled, six cores from the mountain were collected. The team brought back 705 feet of frozen ice core ranging in lengths from 30 to almost 270 feet to Ohio State University's Bird Polar Research Center. And of course, the ice was stored in the freezer at the university. Now that the ice was brought back to the university, Thompson and his colleagues were ready to analyze it further. Two years after the cores were obtained, Thompson and his colleagues published a paper based on their analysis of the samples. The paper was titled, Kilimanjaro Ice Core Records, Evidence of Holocene Climate Change in Tropical Africa. As suggested by the title, the scientists ventured to Kilimanjaro to study the effect of climate change on the ice fields, but they ended up finding something much more interesting that connected science with religion. The dating methods Thompson and his colleagues used were nothing short of amazing. The team ended up finding a chemical marker in the ice, a spike of the isotope chlorine-36, a radioactive remnant of a nuclear bomb testing from the early 1950s. And as soon as the radioactive material was found in the ice cores, the scientists were better able to investigate the unique history of the ice cylinders. After further investigation, the cores showed evidence of a drought in Africa that started around 8,300 years ago and lasted for 500 years. We believe that this represents a time when the lakes of Africa were drying up, Thompson further explained in an Ohio State University press release via Science Daily. The ice also revealed a second drought that happened about 5,200 years ago. But it was the third drought that was the most interesting. Analysis of the ice cores revealed that there was a third drought about 4,000 years ago that lasted around 300 years. According to historical records, a massive drought wreaked havoc on the Egyptian empire around the time of the pharaohs and it threatened their rule. The drought also ties into the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis. The tale is not only found in the Christian Old Testament, but it's also in the Jewish Torah and the Islamic Quran. If you're familiar with the events of Joseph's life, which are recounted in the book of Genesis in chapters 37 to 50, Joseph was the 11th son of Jacob and Rachel. Joseph was also a favorite of his dad's, which caused lots of jealousy from his brothers. As the story goes, Jacob gave Joseph a coat of many colors to show his affection for his son, but the gift made his brothers envious. The dreams Joseph had and his ability to interpret them only created more sibling rivalry. According to the Bible, Joseph's brothers wanted to murder him, but they decided to sell him into slavery to a band of traders whose camel train was going to Egypt. To hide their crime, they covered Joseph's coat in goat's blood to present as evidence that he died. The next thing that happened was Joseph served as a slave to an Egyptian named Potiphar. Potiphar's wife had feelings for Joseph, and even though he didn't act on them, his master threw him into prison. While locked up, Joseph showed his talent for interpreting dreams. One of the prisoner's dreams he interpreted was the ruler's cupbearer, and the other was the pharaoh's chief baker. 
Joseph's analysis of the cupbearer's dream was that he would go back to his previous position. But the baker's dream was much grimmer. He was going to be executed. As you may already know, both of these dreams came true. Then the Pharaoh had an incredibly odd dream that he couldn't seem to make sense of. In the dream, he saw seven sickly cows eating seven healthy cows and seven wilted ears of corn eating seven healthy ears of grain. However, no one was to figure out the meaning behind the very vivid dream. And that's when the Pharaoh's restored cupbearer remembered his cellmate Joseph's amazing ability to interpret dreams. As the story goes, the Pharaoh then sent for Joseph to interpret his dream. Joseph shared with the Pharaoh that his dream meant Egypt would have seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. While this wasn't great news for the Egyptians, the Pharaoh was so impressed by the former slave that he decided to give Joseph a prestigious title. He appointed him as his vizier, a senior official and advisor. So Joseph helped the Pharaoh and the Egyptians prepare for the hard years to come. The former slave advised the Pharaoh to store any surplus grain during the seven years of plenty, so that when the seven years of famine began, the grain hoarded could help Egypt survive during the difficult times. According to the tale, Joseph's ability to interpret dreams helped save Egypt during the seven-year famine. This period of famine and drought from the Bible connects perfectly to the findings of Thompson and his colleagues. If you recall, the ice cores revealed a drought that began around 4,000 years ago and lasted for 300 years. The evidence the scientists found from this drought revealed the ice cores had a thin layer of dust. In addition to the tale from Genesis, other historical records show that Egypt experienced a severe drought that put the Pharaoh's rule at risk. Prior to that, people were able to survive in areas of the Sahara Desert that are now barren. It's not often that science and religion can agree on something, but in this case, the two go hand in hand. Even though most people don't take the stories from the Bible literally, some events may have historical facts intertwined with them. Like the story of Joseph, it seems to connect perfectly to the research conducted by Thompson and his team that shows there was a long-lasting drought that affected the area. So, could this drought happen again? Well, Thompson and his team seem to think so. Whatever happened to cause these dramatic climate changes in the past could certainly occur again. But today, 70% of the world's population lives in the tropics. They would be dramatically affected by events of this magnitude. We have to find out what causes them to happen, Thompson said in his report via Science Daily. When Thompson and his team trekked to Mount Kilimanjaro, and collected samples to see why the ice fields were shrinking, they didn't expect science to confirm a biblical story. Science and religion don't often connect, and this discovery shows that religious stories may actually have some factual basis. How incredible! We can't wait to see what other historical treasures are unearthed in the future and the biblical secrets they'll reveal.